those two things are going to flow in from high to low. Well, you can guess that if this happens, the graph is going to begin massively going upwards. Hey everybody, Organized Biology. We're talking cardiac action potentials today. So let's keep the end goal in mind. We have these cells right here called cardiac myocytes. And myocyte literally means muscle cell. So we want to tell these guys when to contract, when to pump that blood, right? So at the very end of this whole process, we want these little lines, these are called striations or sarcomeres, which are the contractile unit of your muscles, we want these sarcomeres to basically shorten, to contract, right? Because sarcomere literally means muscle unit. So it's the unit of your muscles. So how do we get these guys to contract so the heart can beat? Well, these sarcomeres are saying we need a lot of calcium. And calcium, as you can see, is going to be red in this whole diagram, and it is stored in this big warehouse in all of your muscle cells called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. But the sarcoplasmic reticulum is also saying, well, hey, I need calcium first. So we've got the sarcomeres that need calcium to contract, and we've got the sarcoplasmic reticulum that has a lot of calcium inside of it, but it's not going to open until it gets a lot of calcium. So the question is, how do we get the heart muscle the calcium it needs to contract? Enter our pacemaker cells. Now the main pacemaker of your heart is called the SA or sinoatrial node. And the sinoatrial node is going to quite literally set the pace and tell these heart muscles when to contract. So how does it do that? Well, it starts with being relatively negatively charged. As you can see on this graph, this SA node likes to chill out at negative 60 millivolts. This is kind of an odd thing, but cells have a voltage. It's because the cells are going to be packed full of these proteins that are negatively charged, keeping that charge inside the uh, fluid environment of the cell relatively negative. So in order to actually get calcium into these muscle cells, we need to actually get this SA node positively charged because when cells get positively charged they do stuff and we'll see that here in a little bit but before we get to that we need to know what the cell has done to help it control the process of telling those muscle cells to contract they, we want them to contract in a very controlled manner so how do we do that number one this SA node cell will have a pump called a sodium potassium pump and what this pump is constantly doing it's called an ATPase because it's going to be utilizing ATP energy if you want to learn more about ATP, you can learn about it in that video over there. But what this pump does is it actually tosses sodium out of the cell while throwing potassium into the cell. Now, don't worry about why it does this, but what I want you to key in on is that outside of the cell now, we have a very high concentration of sodium. Whereas inside the cell, we're going to have a very high concentration of potassium. Well, great, but we're not talking about these things. We're talking about calcium, right? So I need to enter calcium into the game here a little bit. And there's going to be pumps that I haven't drawn that's going to keep calcium relatively high outside of the cell as well. And we know in nature, things like to flow from a high concentration to relatively low concentration. So if these guys get the chance, they're going to flow into the cell. If this guy gets the chance, he's going to flow out of the cell. But they can't because they're charged and they can't cross that membrane. So we need some proteins, some membrane proteins that you can learn about here to help facilitate the process of bringing these things in and out. The key being we want calcium to get here, right, to contract the heart. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to start with this guy right here. This is a protein channel called a funny channel, one of my favorite ones. And it's called a funny channel because it's very rare and we don't see it very often, really only in pacemaker cells, because it is a sodium leak channel. And that means it's going to allow sodium to quite literally leak from high to low concentration constantly. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, we've got high sodium out here. So sodium is going to begin entering the cell. And what that will do to the pacemaker cell is it's going to uptick it ever so slightly until it gets to a charge of negative 40 millivolts. This is called the threshold potential. Now think of a threshold as basically that point of no return. Once you cross the threshold, something's going to happen, right? And that's the case for these SA node cells. So once it hits that threshold potential, we have just changed voltage. So now we can actually open these Harry Potter chain. I mean, kind of looks like his forehead though. These voltage gated calcium and sodium channels. So obviously, if we're opening up voltage gated calcium and sodium channels, which are high outside of the cell, those two things are going to flow in from high to low. And there is a ton of these. So don't imagine just one. There's literally thousands of these in the SA node. So there's a massive amount of influx of these positive ions. Well, you can guess that if this happens, the graph is going to begin massively going upwards. And that's called the action potential. 
otherwise known as depolarization. We're getting away from being negative. So this can actually get up to, say, positive 10 millivolts, so very positive. Now I'm going to finish what the SA node cell does, but I want you to key in on these two ions and how they're going to actually move over to here, here in a second. But immediately after this, immediately once we gain a lot of these ions, being step number two, the cell doesn't like to stay positive for very long. So what's going to happen is we're actually going to open up these guys once that action potential is reached. And these are called voltage-gated potassium channels. So when the voltage-gated potassium channels open, obviously potassium is high inside the cell. Potassium is going to begin leaving the cell. And obviously, if you lose a positive out of the cell, the cell's voltage is going to get negative. But before we get negative, obviously, we have to close something, right? So at the same time that these guys open, these guys up here are actually going to close. So now that we have these guys closed up again and these guys open, potassium is flowing out, and that's going to cause the voltage of the SA node to go straight down. And then the process starts over. So that is how the SA node spontaneously depolarizes or sends its own action potential. But remember, the goal isn't this guy. The goal is to contract these guys. So we need to now follow calcium ions and the sodium ions as they travel through. Because think about it. These are also cells. These are also negatively charged cells. This one's going to be resting at negative 90, interestingly enough. And it's going to have very low amounts of sodium and calcium, just like the SA node. So if you think about it, these now are flowing in. Well, where do they want to go? From a high to low. So these ions are going to flow through these specialized channels called gap junctions into the neighboring myocyte. So when the gap junctions allow those ions through, now we've got sodium coming in and we've got calcium coming in. Ooh, so remember, we needed calcium to get this whole thing started, but we need a little extra boost. So here's what's going to happen. First off, these guys are going to be called fast sodium channels. And obviously, they've got the lightning bolt, so they're going to be voltage gated. And as soon as all these ions flow in, these guys are going to open immediately, very quickly, as the name implies. And sodium is going to begin flowing into the cell rapidly. So that's going to contribute to this cell. It was negative. These ions flew in. I'm going to say this is, say, step number one for this graph. And that's going to immediately rise it up to the threshold potential, immediately rise it up all the way to action potential. So that makes this cell positive. And in fact, I'm not going to show this, but all of what's happening here will also immediately happen in the next cardiac myocyte because they also have those gap junctions. So whatever's happening in one will happen in all of them. So we have a very efficient contraction of the heart muscle tissue which makes sense because it's going to be pumping blood. So we need that whole muscle to contract. So once we get sodium coming in, we've also got the key here. These guys right here are called slow calcium channels. And obviously they're voltage gated as well. And they're just going to wait a beat, just a quick little beat before they open and allow that calcium to start flowing into the myocyte. And this is where the magic happens, right? Because once calcium comes in here, remember the sarcoplasmic reticulum that was chilling right here needed calcium before he opens. So this calcium goes to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it helps induce a process called calcium-induced calcium release. Where this influx of calcium triggers the sarcoplasmic reticulum to open its own channels and allow a massive, a massive, massive amount of calcium to fly out of it. And that's the key here, right? Once we release a massive amount of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, remember that calcium is going to go everywhere, high to low, go to the sarcomeres and actually cause contraction through the sliding filament theory, which I have a video on that here. So obviously that's great. We contracted the heart muscle, but remember what I said about the SA node in any cell for that matter. We don't like to keep the cell positive for very long. It's important to get the cell positive, do something, and then get it back negative. So once this whole cell gets positive, what are we going to open once again? Well, just like here, we're going to open these voltage-gated potassium channels. And they're going to open once again at that action potential, which is somewhere probably around positive 20 to 30 in this heart muscle cell. So again, as these channels open, potassium now is going to start flowing outward. And again, just like SA node, at the same time, these fast sodium channels will also close at action potential. 
So now we've got the sodium channels closed and we've got the potassium flowing out. Well, this process of potassium leaving actually drops this graph just a little bit. That's called the early repolarization phase. But the thing about this is after early repolarization, what actually happens? Well, the graph plateaus for a brief pause, for about 200 milliseconds. Well, that's weird. Well, that means if we're losing positive, in order for the graph to stay stable, we have to also be gaining positive at the same time. Well, what is still coming in? The calcium. So the slow calcium channels, the reason they're called slow calcium is they stay open for just a brief period longer. So since they stay open for just a little bit longer after that action potential is reached, we now have calcium coming in, potassium flowing out, and there's this even split of voltage. But why are we doing this? Why, why this rather than just going straight back down like the SA note? Well, this plateau phase, when the calcium continues to come in, helps prolong the process of calcium-induced calcium release. Now, why is that so important? Well, think about it. If we were to just get this guy positive, get some calcium on the sarcomeres, and then bring it straight back down like this, that would be called a muscle twitch, which is what happens in your skeletal muscles, where they just slightly twitch like this, right? Just hardly moving. Do you want your heart to just slightly twitch when it contracts? No, you want your heart muscle to fully contract strong for just a little longer than a normal skeletal muscle, right? You want it to fully contract, fully contract. So by allowing calcium to continue coming into the cell, we allow plenty of calcium to fill all of those sarcomeres and fully contract all of the muscle cells to ensure an efficient stroke of the heart, all right? So that plateau phase is probably one of the reasons you're alive right now. So it exists once again for an efficient heart contraction. Right at the end of plateau phase, these slow calcium channels are going to close, and then the net efflux of potassium is going to win out. So it's actually going to drop all the way back down to resting potential once again. Now we're not done yet, but if this has been helpful so far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I make a lot of videos like this, making difficult concepts a little more easy. But now guys, we have a bunch of calcium and sodium inside the cells and a bunch of potassium that we just lost. So we need a variety of different pumps to actually reestablish these gradients. One of which will be called the circa pump that actually pumps calcium back into the sarcoplastic reticulum as well as the sodium potassium pump that will reestablish this gradient in both the SA node and these cardiac myocytes, thus getting all those ions back to where they need to go to start the whole process over again. So this was basically SA node to specifically the atrial muscle or the top part of the muscle, but the AV node, which we're not gonna talk about today, is another pacemaker cell that actually helps contract the ventricle muscle. And the same exact process occurs for both of those. So if you wanna learn more about the heart's conduction system, I highly recommend hopping over here, or you can also look at the ECG video, which explains what we actually see on those weird looking ECG diagrams.